we're all top left in our own. Uh, we're all top left in our own. Oh, stream. that's right. Yeah, you because know, we're number one to ourselves. That makes that oh, makes sense. Okay. All right. And I've started recording again, so we're back. Oh. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so we had to cut out a little section there because everything got all screwy. Um, and we had discussed jump scares. I like them. Jen doesn't, but she had a good one in the gray. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Rob likes them if they're done right. Steve didn't have a whole lot to say about it. Um, I think you said you liked them if they were done right, right? What the fuck did you say, Steve? I do. I obviously wasn't but paying I, attention. I, I know you weren't, so let me explain it again. I said that I think the um, the uh, anticlimactic scenes that are have have taken over the new jump scare kind of thing, like that's yeah, what that's I've right. seen a lot uh, in a lot yeah. of movies. So the anti jump scare, the anti, the anti jump scare, scare. the build up, like they're, nothing. They're happens. prepping you for the jump yeah. scare, but there is no jump scare. No cat comes out, no ghost walks across the screen, and you're just sitting there like, what no the wolf fuck? Chews the shit out of you. And I'm not gonna lie, nope. I've rewinded those kinds of scenes a few times because I thought I missed something. Hmm. I've done it. They've gotten me. And I, and I like that because I like the, you know, you, you got me. Um, and then from there, we we're talking about movies that like over advertise a certain actor and they're in it for like a minute. Mm -hmm. Jen had brought up Scream with Drew Barrymore and absolutely because she's like all over that shit. She still like shows up for appearances for Scream and she was in the movie for five fucking minutes out of seven fucking movies. She's and it's just part weird. of the reason she's part of the reason why that movie was like so big at the time. Um, yeah. She was a pretty well known actor. Um, especially or actress, spirit, whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, and yeah, yeah, I, uh, I think that she's a big part of why that movie was so popular. That and like the whole like teen, you know, scene, for lack teen of a better scene. phrase. Yeah. Today on the teen scene. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So a movie I noticed recently was called Camp Hell and I bought the movie for like two bucks, which whatever. Because Jesse Eisenberg was all over that shit. And we had recently been talking about him. And I was kind of in the mood for some Jesse Eisenberg. And I was mm -hmm. like, let me check this shit out. Um, dude was in it in the beginning for five minutes. Like, literally, they put him all over the fucking cover. Everything else, dude was yeah. in it for five minutes. He wasn't in it like Marketing. at all. The marketing um, boy. Yeah, well, it, it worked, worked. Because it worked. I bought the fucking yeah. thing. But you know what? It didn't work because I bought the thing for two fucking dollars. Because after everybody else realized it. They fucking got rid of the son of a bitch. Oh. So now it's out there for two bucks because, you know, but it got me because I didn't know. So, you know. Yeah, uh, that happened to me with a uh, Tony Jaw movie, if y'all like Kung Fu. Uh, Tony Jaw's awesome, and his face was plastered on the center of, uh, what was it, Battle Warrior, I think? Yeah, great name for a movie. Uh, you know you're getting the real deal with Battle Warrior. He was in it for 60 seconds, a hmm. few minutes. He was gone in yeah. 60 seconds. I was going to say, would you say he was gone in 60 seconds? Or is that? He, I've been beaten. I know he's in every movie. Um, I got a question. Horror okay. movie related and gone in 60 seconds related with Nick Cage. Okay. Who has seen the movie Mandy? Yes. Is it worth a watch? Because I, I saw today as I was looking at some stuff that that one was banger from like 2019 or whatever it was yeah it I, was I, I liked it i like color out of space more but i saw like 30 minutes of it uh but i was passing out as it was happening uh so i want to go back and rewatch it if you watch it i'll watch it i, I really want to watch it so yes well, fuck it. if you guys watch it i'll add it to my list of 3,000 movies i need to see i know right mm -hmm. Right. But you also mentioned Jen the color out of space. Yes. That That's more my type of movie. Is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, What's that one about? It's Cosmic uh, horror. yeah, Cosmic Horror. It was literally the same title of an HP Lovecraft sh short story. Mm -hmm. Uh and it's probably the best rendition I've seen of any of HP Lovecraft's work. Um hmm really well done and it, of course nicholas cage helps oh, always jesus. <laughs> always helps oh, jesus. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, he's a little hit or miss for me <laughs> yeah rob is uh, fucking what, obsessed what was that one called oh willie willie's Pat. wonderland willie's wonderland yes. oh, yeah, yeah. Must I, see. I, <laughs> I, 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 I made 
<laughs> so much money for not saying a single word. Right. Mm -hmm. But I didn't mind that. That's not even like, I don't care about that. That's fine. Um, I'm glad she's making added, money again. Kind of added to the movie, really. Um, but but my biggest bones. my biggest beef with Willy's Wonderland is the fact that when he was like fighting the animatronic animals, um, he it was like really quick. Like there was like nothing more to it than like he just fucking mm -hmm. beats the shit out of them. He kills them like pretty much instantly. There's like nothing fun related like with them. Uh, there wasn't enough wasn't enough meat on the bones, we'll say. That's because yeah. he had to go chug an energy drink and play some pinball. Yeah, I did get like back that to what game. mattered. I liked the arcade part when he was playing the arcade game. I liked that. that I love crazy. how he cleans up blood with like damn near just soap and water, and it comes right <laughs> off like That's really easy. I mean, the movie is a parody of itself. It's hilarious. How do you clean up your blood, yeah. Steve? Uh, like this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fair. You just suck it up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I sure as shit ain't cover uh, a wall covered in blood gonna wipe it up, up with a paper towel and, and soap and water like like they did. Yeah. Like no blood smear or nothing. It just like comes right off. Yeah, well they so. do that in horror movies a lot. It seems like you can brutally kill somebody and then somebody else will walk through that area of the building like a second later and like they've already cleaned up the blood. I think they That's do that. A, in I mean, it takes term. Nick Cage like five minutes to clean up a complete bloodbath scene. <laughs> well, he's like spigot. I don't paper towels. The quicker picker upper. Quicker picker upper. <laughs> Nicholas Cage always gets the job done. He's like Mr. That's Clean. <laughs> is it Bounty or Brawny, or is that two separate brands? Two separate, two separate brands. brands. Two separate brands. Yeah. Brawny's got the uh, like picnic table Lumberjack. shirt. Yeah. Lumberjack. Oh, ah, yeah. so what's Bounty got? Bounty is uh, a circle, circle color. A catchy yeah, tune. <laughs> I don't know. The quicker, the quicker, thicker, picker, upper. The quilted, Thick, quicker, yeah. picker, upper. The quilted, <laughs> quicker, thicker, picker, upper. Picker, pick, picker, thicker. <laughs> what the fuck? Picker, picker. Yeah. Pickle peppers. The, pe <laughs> the, the pickle peppers. The pickle pepper, thicker, quicker, picker, upper. How much quicker Wait. could a picker, pecker, pickled pepper? <laughs> if he was using bounty paper towels. <laughs> That's right. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say six. <laughs> but licks to a center of a Tootsie Roll pop. Three. Well, that's three. <laughs> Allegedly. <Bunch. laughs> um, so another movie recently that I thought that it was like, well, this was me. Um, I knew that the original cast was in the Ghostbusters Afterlife. I just recently watched that because I'm getting excited about the new one that's coming out. And uh mm -hmm. the Ghostbusters were only in that for like 10 minutes, but I actually really liked the mm -hmm. afterlife movie i don't know if you guys did or not i know it's not really horror kind of it is but um i dug like it the dealing with ghosts and everything it's yeah i'll i'll call it like horror light yeah it's like uh, Although, kids horror ghostbusters 2 does have some very not child scenes ghostbusters 2 <laughs> is uh <laughs> that's gozer and shit that's the uh yeah gozer gozer's in the I afterlife am... as well I am Vigo. For me, you are nothing but fly. Vigo, yeah. <laughs> Ghostbusters is fucking great, man. I can't wait to see the new one. When Hudson was walking through the subway and was just surrounded by severed heads on pikes. Like, <laughs> don't let your kids see that. That's Oh yeah. <laughs> He's kind of like a Vlad the Impaler type character yes. there, huh? Yes. Maybe he was fucking Dracula. Should have should have brought yeah. him up for uh, yeah, the vampires. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we're bringing him up now, so if anybody it's actually watches vampire. this show consecutively, they're like, oh, fuck, they mentioned that before. For those hmm. who don't really watch us consecutively, they're probably not watching us now, so whatever. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, like, um, so this 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 really annoys me, and I know Steve's going to be on board with me about this one. I fucking hate when they don't confirm that the bad guy is dead, or they don't overkill. Like, I hate when, like, they have some Michael Myers character or some shit, and they, like, shoot him, and he falls... And then they're just like, oh, he's dead. And it's like, if I was ever in a situation like that, I I think I'd spend the next, like, 24 hours just stabbing him, shooting him, kicking him, punching him. like Beheading him? Yeah, beheading him, fucking skull fucking him, whatever the fuck I needed to do to make sure that he's dead. And then, I mean. And when the police come by and they're like, why did you kill him so brutally so many times? And you'd be like, well, I watch horror movies. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've seen <laughs> yeah. fucking Halloween. Oh, no, you're, you're right. I don't. I don't like that. There's actually a movie that 
I, I watched last night or started to watch again last night because I had watched it a while back and I didn't think it was that great. And now I still don't think it was that great um, is uh, Last Days on Mars. If you guys, I think is what it was called. The la- last Days about on Ghost, Mars. Ghost of Mars? No, ice, uh, no it's The Last Days on Mars. It's got, uh, uh, Le- again, Leap Shriver's in that one. Um, oh, shit. All right. I and, think I know what you're uh, talking about. Yeah, and then uh, who's the guy? Who's the guy from like Law and Order? Uh, um, well, there's been a shitload of them, but the well, the guy last name starts with an M. Something. He's you got one of the A Stabler, like uh, yes, yes, that guy. Uh, he's in it too. But anyway, is is it's a uh, Maloney something Maloney? Yeah, wow. yeah. But anyway, he he dies in in Chris, the Chris uh, Maloney. Sorry, go ahead. Yes, that's it. So so he is infected by these other two astronauts that are they turn like into demons almost and they're killing people. And so he gets uh, stabbed by these things and he ends up dying. And um, these other these other uh, astronauts have been out in space on on Mars without their helmets on and everything. And they're still alive even though they had died previously so now this guy just died on the table and one of the women is trying to like zip tie him to the table and everybody else is like what are you doing he's dead he's dead and she's like do you not see the other two people running around here trying to kill us what do you think's going to happen here and sure enough fortunately she did zip tie him down because 30 seconds later they take the sheet back off of him and he's already starting to transform and everything and he mm-hmm. comes back a life again. So um, that was maybe the one part of the movie that I actually thought was cool that somebody had the wherewithal yeah. to prepare for what was getting ready to come. But yeah, there's so many movies where a hit on the head and somebody's knocked out and then, okay, well, I'll turn my attention to something else. Well, that guy comes back and kills you later on. So yeah, um, I, I hate that. They, uh, they never go back and make sure you got to confirm your kill double tap, you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and maybe man. as bad, just as bad as when somebody chokes somebody out, and then they're done for the rest of the movie. So if you like choke somebody out and they fall asleep, they're out for thirty minutes to an hour. That's more like three to five seconds is how that works. So hmm. for all of you who have not been choked out before, I've been hitting the head pretty later. hard too, and it hasn't knocked me out for like eight hours. So I get what you're saying. Same general principle. Yeah. 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 It's fucking ridiculous. Um, and they need to go back and make sure he's dead. Cause that's usually how so many people end up getting fucked because they, it's, it's like they fucking just do one thing, shoot him, stab him, whatever. And then they start doing the victory dance and dudes getting up behind them. And, you know, we see mm-hmm. that all the time in horror. And that just has always annoyed the shit out of me because I feel like if anything, like, you know, Jen had said, you know, the cops are going to get there and be like, you literally mush this guy into fucking, hamburger what's going yeah. on and i'd be like i don't fucking know if he's gonna come back or not he's still yeah. gonna come back as a fucking hamburger and give me mad cow disease and fucking <laughs> kill me i don't know i don't know Boil him, mash him stick him in a stew i mean <laughs> you know you just can't stop you gotta make sure the job is fucking done if you're gonna kill somebody or you know you got somebody after you just fucking get it done get it done get, get her done. done so like so what do you another- guys are if you have you heard about the new Constantine movie? Any more about it when it's coming mm-hmm. out or any details on it? I haven't heard a single thing in the longest of times. Um, is it still happening? I think so. I hope so. I hope so, too. I, I, I love Constantine. Yeah. I'll, I'm stoked over it. And the reason why I'm throwing that Easter egg out now is because I want to uh, talk about music in movies again real quick. Mm-hmm. So... Obviously, there are um, different um, like instrumentals, typically more of of the um, almost like a symphonic type of, you know, the the, the cellos, you know, strumming back mm-hmm. and forth and just to kind all of build. Uh, yeah, I mean, to, to kind of set the scene and everything. And that's always cool uh, because it does help you kind of understand where your mind should be or are or, or, or you sad are you happy are you excited are you on edge um but rarely are there actual songs like songs you can hear on the radio or uh, or listen to that are played within a movie that has a has 
some power to the scene as well. And in Constantine, the scene where um, he's walking through, what is it, Papa Midnight's like club, uh, where it's got all the demons in it and everything. You guys remember that scene where he's walking through and uh, there are primarily demons in there. There might be an angel or two, but there are mostly demons, one of which turns uh, water into wine while he's walking by. Um, they're playing a song called Passive by um, A Perfect Circle. And mm -hmm. just the way that that song kind of plays during that moment, it just felt really like perfect mm -hmm. for that scene. Mm -hmm. Like it was very dark and ominous and just kind of, but also intriguing at the same time. So that was a perfect song for a perfect moment within that movie, I thought. By a perfect, By a perfect circle. circle. A perfect circle, yeah. By a perfect circle. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Everything was perfect. Perfect moment, guys. It was. And that is a perfect movie. I do love it. Yeah. Music music really like makes a movie, I think. Like we were talking about Halloween earlier, and I know that the music is very simple. It's very simple, but I also think it's very effective. Um, I don't really care that much for the Halloween movies. Um, but I do think that they did a pretty decent job with the music. Because it's very iconic, it's very like you know knowable. Like everybody knows that song, that theme. Oh, that's like that's like the Walmart version. Never mind, that's not it. What? I, I this guy plays music. Oh. And it's but it sounds like the Walmart version of the song. I didn't realize. Mm -hmm. I thought it was might be a little more spot on. Sorry, I was trying <laughs> to add some. That was not the perfect moment. <laughs> that was uh, like a by Michael the Walmart Hunter version. Wish version. Uh, wish, yeah, was, wish, wish version, Walmart wish version. I was going to say the Walmart version down. is must be done by Garth Brooks because that's <laughs> great that's value version, version. Whatever the point is, it's not exactly how it sounds. So mm. that's all I was getting at. It's the wish version, you know. Yeah. Um. So another thing, I was looking up what other people annoys other people because I kind of wanted to go on that for a minute, and somebody had brought up that they hated. Um unrealistic character decisions so they're talking about like when the characters make logical oh decisions. oh my god that destroys me but every time i see it and that's good i'm glad that you have that opinion because i would almost argue that and be like we're not in that situation we don't know what's going on and what's going through your head and i don't know like the biggest example is like running up the stairs instead of out the front door um i don't know well I, there's choices I'm, you make on the fly and then, like, there's also choices you make with a group of people around you, and no one stops you. Mm. Well, that's that like, sheep mentality, man. I mean, that happens that, in real life all the time. Groupthink sure. is what they call it. You know, a bunch of assholes sitting around, and they, you know, don't have enough diversity to make a better decision. Um, give me an example. Do you have an example of that? Because I'm, I'm kind of uh, curious so, what you're thinking. For me specifically, like the first one that comes into mind is an alien movie. And okay. I think it's Covenant. It's the one with, uh, I think, Danny McBride is his name. Yeah. He's the, the pilot the, of a ship. Idris Elba is the captain. And his wife is on the planet. And he's like, I got to go save my wife. And he's flying a colonizing ship, which has like millions of people in cryosleep, something like that. And he drives it into the atmosphere to save his wife, one person. There's other people on the bridge. They would have decked him out and just stopped him from doing that. It is wildly frustrating to me. I could see that. That'd be pretty pretty frustrating. Yeah. A lot of these movies, too, have the... They got, like... Typically, it's the jock. But he's the he's the leader, right? The guy who's making quick, rash decisions that typically are the ones that are going to get somebody killed. Um, but then you've got uh, a bunch of followers. So you've got like one leader and a bunch of followers and uh, in, in a lot of these types of movies. So the majority of them are always the followers. And once the, the leader, the guy that makes the decisions dies because he's typically the one that gets stabbed in the back while he's trying to save somebody else, then you've got a bunch of followers making decisions based off of other followers decisions. So uh, it compounds and makes them all even worse. But um, mm. yeah, there, there's so many different examples of that. It's, it's crazy for, with, with all of these movies, but um, 
Yeah, I mean, that that's always been, Jake, I've talked to you about this. I hate, I'm a big stickler on realism in any type of genre of movie, whether it's horror or, you know, drama or comedy or anything. I just, I don't like stupid shit. And um, unfortunately, you see that a lot in, in the horror genre, for sure. Yeah. See, my, I agree my, with you 100%. My I'm only argument on that, though, is that, like, everybody reacts to shit differently. And that's the first thing they teach mm-hmm. you, like, in psychology is, like, trauma and shit like everybody like liza here's a great example we all know liza liza's been on the show i know liza very well she's a very good friend of mine and when liza when when there's crazy shit going on or it's like a sad time like liza has a tendency to like giggle or laugh and it's just like her like mechanism or whatever you know uh uh coping mechanism or whatever for dealing with the situation and that like it's like when somebody's wife dies some people are like oh my god it's and other people oh, are just yeah. sitting there like uh, you know, staring off into space, whatever the fuck. I'm just thinking, like, when your adrenaline's pumping and you're getting chased by the serial killer or monster or whatever, it's like, I don't really know if we can necessarily judge what somebody would do in that situation. I mean, I have no idea what I would do necessarily. I would like to think that I'd be some badass and learn kung fu, like, uh, you know, who is it, Busta Rhymes and H2O or whatever. Mm-hmm. I would like to think that I would just automatically have these kung fu skills in that situation, but I probably wouldn't. And uh, I don't know. I might find myself uh, hiding out in the shed underneath all of the chainsaws hanging above me. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I'm not oh, sure. It's it's such an overdone thing that even like a Geico commercial made fun of it. Let's hide behind this wall yeah. of chainsaws. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it. I think that it's a tactic used to further, I guess, the storyline, and they don't know how to do it, and it, they just do it badly, and it's. I mean, there's no doubt there are morons walking around the earth, on the earth. I mean, I see them every day. So there are going to be people that make dumb decisions, but there are also the analytical type, which is, I mean, that's how I make my my living. I mean, I I have to analyze everything during the course of the day to make proper decisions to put people in the position to succeed. So um, I'm always constantly thinking on, on how to improve things and and uh, act out certain things prior to them happening, look for what's wrong in something before it even goes wrong. So I can prepare, have two or three different contingency plans. Uh, that's a way of life for me. So not to say that I would make the, the most educated decision every time, but I personally being that type of person, I'm going to see it that way as, as if that's, that's a dumb, another dumb decision by another idiot. So I just wonder, not everybody, I just want- I just wonder what your ability to do that in like a second is though. Like, like in the moment in like a, a split second, can you do that in a split second? You know, like, well, it the depends. Guy's chasing I think so. I think I can. Yeah. I mean, it depends on what it is. Um, if, if it's run down into the basement or head out into an open field, the basement's going to close off at some point. Right. So instantly I'm thinking, get out into the open. I've got more options. I'm not going to be, I can see what's coming. Uh, but, yeah. and that's obviously a small example of that, but I'm just saying that there, there are little things that you're kind of pre-wired to, uh, that, that fight or flight mechanism that everybody has. Some have it better than others, I'm assuming, but, um, I, I mean, instantly in just a split second, I'm thinking basement, there's one way in one mm-hmm. way out. You yeah. Know? So that's, yeah. that's just like night of the living dead. Remember when I was talking about night of the living dead on the other episode? Yeah. That one guy was like always like talking about, I want to go down into the cellar. I want to stay in the cellar. Um, and the other guy was like, no, man, you got to like fight these zombies. <laughs> well, they didn't call them zombies, but yeah. <laughs> exactly. The same, same concept there. I definitely yeah. agree with that. Well, and, and, and- suppose that he is an idiot though. Like I think, I think some of those decisions that you guys are talking about, it's supposed to show that these characters are stupid. Um, it it does it it has a reason behind it some of the time I think some of it's like half of it's like lazy writing on the other half of it is like it needs to be in there yeah so what that character is all about yeah and they're probably are idiots that really do that um and and Steve's point leads me to another thing that really and this actually does annoy me and I really can't defend this is I hate when the killer or monster or whatever does not know like they're incapacitated or they are not paying attention or they are killing somebody else 
and somebody runs into the woods and then they can find them. I don't know if you guys ever like played in the woods as kids, but I mean like how the fuck would you be able to find somebody if they just took off into the woods? Like you didn't even know what direction they went in like that. That I don't know. That annoys the crap out of me. I'm like, there's no way. And then like somebody will run through the woods for like what seems like in the movie, like four hours. And then they still run into the bad guy. And it's like, how did the bad guy find them four hours into the fucking woods somewhere? I don't know. That part just annoys the shit out of me. That is one thing that I'm just, I, I always wonder that. And actually, you know, I've been watching all those wrong turn movies. And that is definitely something that I've thought about in those movies is like, how do they keep fucking finding them? The woods is huge. There's so much in the woods. They have what to keep it? the movie going. Because well, yeah. they can't just the... have the killer like looking around, like, "Oh, I'll go this way," and nope, that didn't work. And this go that way. I would love to see a movie where they run through the woods and the guy can't find it. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, he took the horseshoe trail, which leads him right back here. So I'll just go in there on the other path. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if this is the name of it. Was there a movie called The Game? The Game with, with Michael like, Douglas, Rutger, Rutger Hauer, or something, where where they send? Uh, I think it's. Um, Ice tea oh, out into the woods, and then they have to hunt that. him. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. So that's okay. that was kind of cool. But those guys were actually hunters, and they were they they were going after the the most difficult game, which was was yeah. were humans. So they would. That's, it's based on a story that I read in like high school. I think it's called the most dangerous game. The dangerous game. That might. Be that it. sounds yeah. right. That sounds proper. That, that I mean, sounds this better. Is way cause... back in the day. And I read the story, yeah. so. Yeah, because okay. I think the the game I'm thinking of was Michael Douglas. Yeah, and I know. yeah, it was like his birthday and his yeah, brother a, Sean. A dangerous Penn, I think, game or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I definitely saw that, and that was pretty wild. Uh, them getting these homeless people, you know, getting them food, clothes, and then, all right, now it's time to head off into the woods because we're gonna hunt you, and we'll give you an hour heads heads up or, or head start. So, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, there's. There's nothing worse than somebody running out into the woods in pitch black and then within 30 <clears> seconds, <throat> the, the the bad guy finding him. I mean, you got to be a moron. But. Yeah, I agree. And that annoys the crap out of me. So other things people Jake, said you know, was. Huh? Well, I was going to say, you know what else is really pissing me off now in a lot of these horror movies I've been watching recently? What's and it that? seems oh. to be even more so in recent movies, like five, six, seven years, maybe pops into the most current ones is these endings are atrocious like you're yeah. you're watching a movie it feels like you're right in the middle of it and then the end credits are rolling you're like what the fuck just happened oh without yeah. like a real resolution yeah. there's no yeah. ending to the movies they they yeah. don't end movies very often anymore um at least horror like they movies. want you to it's like they want you to write it yourself or some shit like, it's yes like it's, self, just, it's like the self-checkout lane of fucking movies <laughs> well, they have to leave it open for a sequel, so I guess that's true too. Who's the There's girl that's a resolution? Real hot topic now. Um, she's in Immaculate Sydney something. Sydney, Sydney Sweeney. Oh, yeah. Sydney her. Sweeney. Yeah. Euphoria. So I watched her in a movie um from 2018 or 2019. I forget the name of it. It wasn't bad. It was actually pretty good. Same type of situation. Uh that that she's done in all of her movies it, it appears to be her horror movies up to this point but the ending man i mean like i was actually intrigued i was ex i was kind of like man this isn't too bad and then it ended and i was like what the hell is going on i gotta i gotta figure out what the name of that movie was i was about to say uh we'll come back to that in just a second another thing that um people said that they get annoyed by and this was just like a consensus type thing was excessive gore which i know jen automatically fucking disagrees with so I, I put that in there for Jen because Jen is the gore yeah. queen, <laughs> queen of loving gore. Um, mm, but yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people, goodness. a lot of people feel like they use gore to as a like uh, alternative to actually being scary. Was what mm -hmm. I read. By a, a I, I feel people. that way. I see that? I can see that. I'm not going to disagree yep. with that. <laughs> but you still love it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> So, Steve, did you find out what you're looking for? Yeah. yeah, it was called Along Came the Devil. And it it wasn't bad. It was 2018. Um, I think that's on my I, list. I enjoyed every minute of it until the damn thing was over. And then I was like, what the heck? 
Like they mm-hmm. just, they literally just cut the film. So that's it. Yeah. We're done. Yeah. That kind of reminds me of this movie I saw like a while back that I kind of, I really enjoyed it. Um, It was call, called Beyond the Black Rainbow. Have you guys ever seen that? Yes. The ending. The fucking ending. Do you remember that? No, it's been <laughs> no because it didn't. A happen. long time. Uh, did it end? Is <laughs> um, it did end, but the way it ended was so <laughs> fucking out of like a fucking cheap ass eighties horror movie, but not in the good way. <laughs> because like the whole movie is like really cool. I thought it was really cool. Um, the music's great. Um, there's some really like cool visuals. Um, visuals are amazing. Yes, and, and like then, the visuals you know, are so good, you don't ended? really know what's even happening. It's like fucking stupid as hell. The ending was like shit. I'm gonna spoil things for people. Um, Do it. It was. Fuck it was like. People. It was like the the bad guy that's been like after her this whole time. Yeah. Um, he might have he, transcended into godhood. He fucking, he fucking trips over something and that's dies. Right. Yep. Just hits his head on a the piece end. of. Metal or a rock or something. Yeah, no, yeah, it's a rock. That's it. it. I mean, literally, fell, like died. that's it. Like, yeah, boom, that's it. Credits. I'm like, Did you guys see the movie The Void? Yes. I've done. I, I liked it. That was that was freaky. But once again, the ending just a little. I mean, oh, it like it was like here and then just. Disappointing. Yeah. Yeah. The ending was a little bit disappointing, but it had some it's cool. Good movie, I liked it. I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I will say for Beyond the Black Rainbow, everything else made up for uh, the abrupt way that it ended. It's such a fantastic movie. The way they do everything, the visuals, as you said, both the visuals and the music, it's just as a cohesive work of art. And I will call it a work of art because I think it is. It's fantastic. Yeah, I'm glad you like it. Now you got me intrigued. Yeah, yeah, but you'll see that ending and you'll be like, what the fuck? Yeah. Apparently the guy falls and hits his head on something. <laughs> what? Yeah. I said, uh huh. <laughs> what? Huh? huh? I said Who? I'm gonna shut the movie off with ten minutes left. Wiki, Wiki, Slim Jake said oh. something about falling on a rock or metal, and then everybody else yeah. said what what what? <laughs> oh, okay. What what? Um one of the last things that somebody wrote, and this guy is a fucking tool, and that's why I'm including this, is they said it annoys them when people go back to save the kids. All I can say about that is the per- the person oh. that wrote that obviously doesn't have kids. Because, like, what the fuck are you gonna, yeah, like, that guy sucks. So I included that just to say that guy sucks. I literally just wanted to be like, that guy sucks. This one is kind of funny, and I thought of Steve when I read this one. It says, I like when things are set in Maine. It makes <laughs> Maine look like some terrifying portal to hell, which is funny yeah. because Silent Hill is located in Maine, too. But something that annoys me no. is when a character starts hyperventilating when they're trying to hide from the villain. That is the weirdest comment ever because we were on main and then they switch over to hyperventilating. It was a weird fucking comment, but I thought of Steve when I thought of the main thing. And with the hyperventilating thing, it's like whoever wrote that's a fucking idiot because I don't obviously. Know also, thing thing. Uh, no, it's in West Virginia. Silent Hill's in West Virginia. Yeah, yeah. This person, yeah this there's person, that. I've never, seen, I've never seen Silent Hill. So. Oh, I'm are you to, out of your I, mind? I've well, never I seen like Silent Hill. Hill. Jake, you've got 8,000 movies and you've never seen Silent Hill? I mean, I probably <laughs> own it. I watch it every Valentine's Day. All right. We're watching wow. it next movie day we have. It, it, if I'm scrolling Valentine's through Day, horror movies, watch- I'm scrolling through and I'm like, I don't know what to watch. I don't know what to watch. And Silent Hill pops up. That's what I'm watching. Yeah, like, I don't even have to. Silent Hill on Valentine's Day, you better hold my hand. It's. Well, Alessa you Gillespie have been thinking about me a lot from what you said. <laughs> so well, the thing with Maine, though, uh, probably is uh, attributed to slightly hell. to all the Stephen King stuff, yeah. which half of the towns that he claims is in Maine aren't even in Maine anyway. Like Derry, for example, is not a yeah. Maine place. But, yeah, that's, yeah, you know, what you know, where, where he states it is. So, um, but, yeah, I mean, there's not too much, not too much in Maine that I know of. This well, person that you're talking about, Jake, he doesn't know his shit. So, well, I I read it and I thought of Steve, but I was also thinking he was going to go into Stephen King, which he didn't. But the thing that cracked me up about it was like he's literally like Maine, and then he's like, 
I want to talk about hyperventilating. And it's all like the way it's written is just it's it's really fucking weird. And I also wanted to say because the hyperventilating shit like he's like, I hate when people are hyperventilating in a horror movie. And it's like, well, fucking what happens to most people when their adrenaline's pumping? They're fucking scared I, and they're running like I sit around. You sit around and eat fucking donuts and smoke cigarettes all fucking day. And then mm -hmm. like a monster chasing you like you're out of fucking breath. Like, what the fuck do you honestly expect anyway? I'll probably just, have to annoy. <laughs> yeah, I would probably at least be breathing heavy. I mean, I can say for sure I'm not going to be running six miles through the fucking woods if I could do that without fucking me. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> anyway, that was the uh, last comment uh, that I found of things that annoy people. Do you guys have anything you'd like to add to the list of annoying things from horror movies? Mm. Or have you just have, added them all? I think away? you covered a lot of my gripes. Yeah. Well, good. Because yeah, I, mean, I feel like I was agreeing with every single one you said. <laughs> I wasn't yeah, agreeing with just... every single one I said. I didn't agree with all of it. <laughs> I didn't agree with all of it either. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of me when you're thinking of Maine? Because you fucking Is it because go to I Maine. lived there. You live there, you go there, you're like, you know, I mean, you're on Stephen King's dick, which I am too. I love Stephen King. I'm not going to fucking sit here and fault oh, you for goodness. that. I mean, Stephen King is a god. But I mean, you know, hit I just... Hit or miss. Hit or miss. It's what? <laughs> hit or miss. Oh, hit or miss. I you know said it's funny? Yeah, I don't, I don't love everything he's done. Nope. <laughs> no, well, how could you? I mean, if somebody does a, a thousand pieces of work, there's no, no way they're all going to be... directors and shit too. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, you can't keep the bar every time. You can't you can't top the right. bar every time. I mean, it's not going to happen. Yeah. But he's got a great body of work, though. Mm, great body. Great. <laughs> hey, you cut out. I, I heard uh, Stephen King's got a great body. Yeah, he's got a great body. <laughs> gotcha. Um, and Jenna apparently agreed. Where the oh, fuck shit. did Rob go? Rob? Rob? He, he went to Maine. <laughs> we lost Rob. <laughs> Maybe he had right. Who knows? So, um, I said bye. <laughs> uh, I have some stuff to talk about, but it's not exactly a complaint. Oh, yeah. Well, we're not just complaining. I mean, I've got a lot of stuff here that's not complaints. Um, go ahead. Do your thing. Okay. Um, well, uh, one of my favorite things to talk about is why some bad horror movies are actually good. <laughs> Hmm. Of course, that would be the topic that I would like to talk about. Okay. Um, so there's like sorry, about four reasons. Uh, some of them kind of melt within one another, though. Uh, so the first reason um, why some bad horror movies are actually good um, is nostalgia. <laughs> uh, that's a it's a big one for me. Um, I will own up to it. I, you know. I'm definitely guilty of liking a movie, mostly on nostalgia. Um, so this can sometimes be a big factor uh, for a lot of people, including me. Um, we all have at least one movie from our past that we love because we watched it when we were very young and it evokes like the essence of childhood, which gives us that warm, comforting feeling. Um, but when we really like look it up, like on Rotten Tomatoes, it has like a 28% like Troll 1. <laughs> the, fir the first troll movie one of my favorite movies from my childhood also troll 2 <laughs> uh troll 1 only has a 28 percent on rotten tomatoes but i still love it um rob you missed it but i'm talking about why some bad horror movies are actually good <laughs> um, oh now, there's a lot <laughs> i know there's so many and i'm gonna go through like all the reasons of why i think that you know they have like merit um, now, I will say this, though, um, movies are like any art form. They are subjective. So, you know, one person may find this movie trash and the other person might be like, oh, but I love that movie from my childhood. That's me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like I said, first reason, nostalgia. Definitely guilty. Um, second reason would be maybe it has like a noteworthy feature. Um, it could have an actor in it that you really like um or a good soundtrack or good special effects um this can be one or two features that move it up a few notches in the grading like your personal grading 
um, despite the rest of the film, which could be terrible. Um, so, I mean, there's like lots of movies. I don't really think I have an example for that one. Um, but there's a lot of movies like that where it just has like one or two features and you're like, oh shit, well, I kind of like this movie. And it goes up a couple notches. Maybe instead of a one, it's a three, you know, for an example. Um, so the third reason, and this ties into number two, uh, creativity and originality. <laughs> that goes a long <laughs> way for me. Yes, me too, for sure. Um, so this is when a movie has a particular twist or a cool concept or maybe a bizarre special effect that is so original um, that you're blown away. You've never seen that before in another movie. Um, it's like, whoa, I've never seen that before. That's fucking wild. <laughs> um, and, you know, you talk about it like with your friends. It's almost like, a, you know, like when you're at work or something, it's like a what, the water cooler type conversation. Like, did you see that? You know, like that kind of thing. Um, now, the example for me, of course, is going to be an 80s movie. Um, and I don't know I if you guys like, have seen it. Like most of the 80s movies are going to be mentioned here. Exactly, exactly. But there is one of my favorite eras. Um, it's, it's my childhood era. So, yeah. you know, it falls into nostalgia as well. Um, so have you guys ever seen Night of the Demons? No. No. Okay. Sounds like no, a vampire movie. Nope. <laughs> it's not a vampire movie. It's like a demonic possession type movie. I don't um, know. Did is... you think it was vampire, Steve? I was just <laughs> being an idiot. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> um, so it is, of course, 80s. I get um, it. it is it is a bit campy. Um, it's not a very remarkable movie for the most part, but there are two scenes <laughs> that I love. And the first, the first scene that I'm going to talk about, it fits into this category because I've never fucking seen it in any movie ever and probably never will. Um, and you guys haven't seen it, so you're not going to be able to relate. You're not going to be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Well, you got to tell us. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so does any do any of you know Leanna Quigley? Do you know the name of that person? Do you know that person? I once knew a Chris Quigley. It doesn't count. I know she's um, really down under. Quigley down under, yes. <laughs> yeah. Tom yeah. Selleck. <laughs> Mustache rides Quigley. for everyone. Uh I can't believe you guys are horror nerds and you don't know who Leanna Quigley is. What? What the fuck? Where All am right. I? I'm looking her, I'm looking her up. Jesus Christ. Yeah, she's been in don't... She's been in a shit ton of horror movies. Um, and she usually plays most of the time the slutty actress type person. Um, and this is no exception. She's kind of slutty. Can I say nothing that word? Wrong with that. Okay? There's nothing wrong with being a little slutty. <laughs> True. There is nothing wrong with that. I agree. Wait, was she the um, dancing naked chick in uh the Return of the Living Dead? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we you do know her. That, yes. He I, doesn't. I, he just looked her up like I am. Don't, yes. don't act like yes. you came in with the. <laughs> All right. You yeah. had to look her up, but okay. Um, but you know who she is. She was in Quigley Down Under, but it was a different <laughs> movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> nice. I was um, Quigley Down Under, not a porno. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, this girl has probably done some porn for sure. Anyway. Um, you know what? Um, you know what's. Sorry. Can I say something about the slutty, though? Because. I, I got a lot of respect for a girl that's a little slutty and she's honest about it. I just think it's, uh, I don't know, it's a little annoying when, like, somebody's slutty and they just try to, like, act like they're not or try to hide it. Anyway, I don't know. That's just a thought it's I had. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. I don't care if anybody, a man or a woman, is a complete and utter fucking whore. I just like it when they're honest about it and they're just like, you know what? I like sex. So, fuck you. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I got a lot of respect for that. But when, like, somebody's out, like, every night with a different person, they're like, what are you talking about? Like, I wouldn't do that. Like. Bullshit. You're a fucking liar. Come home Skank. with me. Skank. Anyway, continue. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so Leanna Quigley is in Night of the Demons. Um, and you know, she's kind of being Leanna Quigley, uh, wearing like really, really short dress. Um, they're in costume because it's Halloween night. Um, and you know, she's got like a lot of makeup on, blah blah blah. Okay, she gets possessed by a demon naturally in this movie. Um, and there's a scene where she's like, uh, she's taking her tube of lipstick and she's going around her boob with a lipstick all around it, 
and then she puts it inside her nipple and it goes completely into the boob and disappears. It's like a cool little magic trick. I know it's it's 80s, like special effects, maybe not look, you know, that cool to us nowadays. Have you tried it? I have not. Um, <laughs> because my boobs are not prosthetic boobs. Um, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be able to get it inside. Um, but I thought that was so cool when I saw that. And it's really stuck with me. It's like an image <clears> that <throat> I can't get out of my head. It's like, how cool is that? It's like a little purse. Like, you can just stick my cell phone in there and my lipstick. <laughs> Inside the boob. I would yeah, If I was a woman, I think true. I'd automatically go vagina. Nope. Nope. They, but that's what I'm saying, though. This is creative. Like, who thought of that? Like, who thinks of that? It must have been on drugs. Because... I don't know. You know, if I know. That. you know who thought of it? It's way out of the box. Way I out. I can tell you. I can tell it's you who thought there. of it. I can tell you who thought of it. You guys want to know who thought of it? Is it the director? Some, <laughs> some fucking dude who literally goes to concerts, shows everywhere with this fucking old lady, and she wants him to carry yeah. her shit around. Uh -huh. That's who thought of it. He was like, you know what? Yeah. I wish that she had somewhere else to put that shit, like in her fucking tits. <laughs> no, so it's I'm uh, carrying it around. It's a cashier uh, accepting stripper money. From someone uh, fresh out the club coming in. Yeah. Well, hold on, let me quit this. There you go. Yeah. I've had that happen to me. I've worked many retail jobs, and that has definitely happened. And it's been it really worked. steady and gross. Yeah. And time for the hand sanitizer. They're, they're yeah. moist yeah. bills. <laughs> Buddy gross yeah. money is the worst. I mean, yeah. I've heard of a prison wallet, but I don't know what that would actually <laughs> be. The boob wallet. Well, oh, I mentioned man. that I mentioned that uh, kid on that one like boob. Oh, I would really like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> listen oh. up, Shark Tank. <laughs> Give us the boob wallet. The yeah, boob wallet. You see, I have exact change here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get it on my nipple. You remember um, those little rubber things that are like shaped like a football yes, that you could squeeze yes, and put change in? Old. Yeah, it's old. It's the old thing. <laughs> I could totally picture like somebody drawing like a boob on that. <laughs> um, do it. Anyway, Fuck anyway. It. Um, so the the second scene is not quite as creative, but there is a goth girl that dances around, and that's really cool. And the music's super cool. I think it's Bauhaus or something. Um, anyway, I probably said that name wrong. Um, <laughs> but um, that is one of my favorite movies. Really, well, not my favorite movie, but definitely a movie that I enjoy watching because of those scenes, mainly the lipstick scene. <laughs> I think I missed the name of the movie because I had to take another ah. call. What was it called? Night of the Demons. Night of the Demons. Okay, I did catch that because it's about vampires, right, Steve? No. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, it has a few other redeemable qualities, but honestly, though, if I take out the goth girl, get goth girl dancing... And the lipstick scene probably be a more forgettable movie, which is why that creative scene, it's what did it for me. It upped it a notch. As long as it did it. <laughs> yeah. So it made a bad um, movie good. For me, ish. yeah, it did. Yes. <laughs> for this one person, yes, me. Um, and then there's the fourth reason on my list, the last one, um, is the... MSTK effect. Yeah, you guys know that what that is, of course, right? Mystery you, science, science theater. theater 3000. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you already know where I'm going with this, right? Um, so these are the movies that are easy oh. to make fun of. Um, best watch best watch in a group setting <laughs> with friends. Um, that have good commentary skills, preferably. <laughs> um, so you're you're finally free to make fun of something without hurting anyone's feelings and laugh collectively with your buddies. Uh, this gives the movie a warm glow in your memory, very similar to the nostalgia factor, which will increase the movie's likability in your eyes. Mm -hmm. So a movie um, like it, Platoon, for example. <laughs> hilarious, right? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Don't remember yeah. that being hilarious. <laughs> no, it actually, wasn't. I was I was having a hard time coming about... up with an example for me, uh, for you know, like a, a campy oh, movie. Oh, for this one, pretty bad. Uh, and then oh, you said Mr. Science Theater three thousand. Yeah, and well, there's that too, like, for one thing. Endless Anything movies are now just popping in my head. It's like, yeah, well, Willy's like, Wonderland is, is a perfect. Sharknado, Clownado, 
Remember that? Hey, Deanna uh, Quigley's in Clownado. <laughs> never, never even began to watch any of it. I just have no, I know it's well, so bad. I just. Exactly. It's so bad. But if you watch it in a group setting and you make fun mm -hmm. of it, then you kind of like it a little bit more just for that factor. Because you were you talking about Sydney setting. Sweeney. I watched mm -hmm. Madame mm -hmm. Webb in the theaters with a few of my friends, and it was yeah. the worst movie I've possibly ever seen. Uh, but we had a, a lot of fun making a fun lot of it fun. in the theater. Yeah. So exactly, uh, yeah. So, there are those so in a way, it's entertaining because you you were able to like make fun of it, make fun of it, and still enjoy the movie. Yeah, which is my point. I, I don't mean that any of these movies are like awesome, like uh, ten out of ten type movies. I just mean they mm -hmm. go up a notch in grading when you're thinking of them because you have that warm, fuzzy, either nostalgic feeling or you know the whole like group setting, make fun of it kind of feeling for the MSTK effect. I've named that. I'm going to copyright that. <laughs> I like that effect. I, I was thinking as you were going on about. Um, I mean, everybody's pulled up to uh, intersection and on every corner there's uh, you got a CVS and a Rite Aid and a car drug. And mm -hmm. you're, you're like, what? There's too many of them all in one spot. With pleasant. movies, it, se it seems like uh, whether it was volcanoes or mm -hmm. space travel or earthquakes, like there volcanoes. there seems to be like three or four yeah. movies that come out almost instantaneously at the same time. Yes. Or, you know, somebody comes out with something and then there's two or three other ones that are right on its heels that are some sort of a version of the virtually the same thing. Yeah. So in that instance, you've got three or four movies damn near about the same topic. And, mm -hmm. you know, you pick the best out of all of them and call mm -hmm. it a day. So um it's hard for me to to come up with anything specific to to represent my thought in this, but um, a non horror movie that that does come to mind is um, the Illusionist and um, the Prestige. The Prestige. The prestige. It, yeah. They came out at the same time. I was they a Prestige did. person. <laughs> Other people are an Illusionist person, but yeah. same kind of idea. Um, mm -hmm. You know, similar. Yeah, big yeah. actors. Sure. I'm right there with you. I had the exact same issue uh, when someone would mention The Illusionist. I would automatically think The Prestige, which mm -hmm. literally just see. happened right yeah. now. Um, and The Illusionist was a good movie. But because I like The Prestige more, that always takes precedence. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, it's funny. Yeah. It's it's funny, Steve, because that's the second time that you said something that reminded me of this top guy's going to bring up. I don't want to go there. Uh, I mean, it does flow with this, but I wanted to make sure Jen has. Uh, are you all set with your? Uh, do you have anything else to add about the? Uh, oh, uh, I, I didn't want to go ahead and get out too off topic without you being able to close out that. Um, I pretty much finished. OK, yeah. So with that. Some, yeah, something I was going to bring up, and Steve, I think it's the second time you said something about it, is what they call it is like twin movies, right? So, um, and this was actually on my list of topics to talk about, and I'm glad you brought that up. It brings us right into it. So um, there's twin horror movies. So we're talking about two movies that come out right around the same time or close together that, like, have similar topics or or are similar in some ways that... um. Yep. Like the Lost Boys and Near Dark, they are similar yeah, they're in similar some ways. Some. Some Hold ways. on one second. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, uh, is there an example of one in the last 50 years? <laughs> I know the Lost Boys are not long. I mean, there's a lot of paranormal stuff <laughs> that uh, yeah. seem a little copycatish. A lot of uh, found footage films that I didn't watch the because found, I was like, nah. Uh -huh. God, the found footage era. Most of them. What was the found footage era? Like 2005 to 2015, maybe in that yeah, 10 year like that, yeah. range. Yeah. It started with um, Blair Witch and then yeah, yeah that, I mean, loaded. But there was there wasn't many of them like early 2000s. There was just a handful of them, mm -hmm. um, or at least that that made it to theater, like Blair Witch, for example. But God, it seemed like every other movie, even now, like when I when I start a movie and it's found footage, I'm just like, no, 
Some what? if somebody's shaking a camera at the other person and they're laughing yeah. and talking about something, I'm like, I don't even care. I don't want to watch yeah. it at all. You're I will jump in way. and say that you can do found footage in a Hollywood production value. Um, mm-hmm. The movie I recommended maybe last VHS. time before was VHS, which is dealing with they find these VHS tapes, found footage, but it's not shaking camcorder. Yeah, it actually, some right. of it is, but it it is a full like Hollywood production. Well, the the worst is definitely your shit like Blair Witch or Cloverfield, where you get fucking dizzy watching it because it's just like basically yeah. just some asshole running around with a fucking camera. Yeah. Um. You know, but I do agree with Rob. If it's going, done right. Going going back to the realism too. If I'm getting chained or, or uh, chased by the devil himself. I'm not running with a fucking camcorder in my hand. That shit's on the ground and I'm gone. So Dude, you got, I you, always would You need to document I mean, it, okay? It needs to be documented. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, he's coming. Happen. Holy life. shit, he's still coming. More important than you living, don't you know? Haven't you guys ever heard pictures yeah. or didn't happen? That's yeah. true. Right. Did you guys so see really, dash cam? That's like one dash of the only good. I did like that one. That was funny. I watched funny. that one on your, that. your recommendation, Steve. Yeah. Very good. yeah. I think I actually did see that, and that one was actually pretty good. Um, yeah, that's kind of a... What about I don't know time if you call code? it necessarily a found footage so much uh-huh. as it was, but... Did y'all watch Time Code? I think that's what it was, uh-huh. where it was like time code. four different panels, and they were being filmed simultaneously. I think it had Salma Hayek and maybe Colin Farrell. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. it was just a really weird movie, and then like an earthquake happens, and everything is it's the the way they did it was interesting. It was a really weird experimental type movie. Um, Tom Hayek's a fucking babe too. Yeah. Always has been, always will be. Yeah, she's aging well. Yeah. Fine, um, fine. I'm sorry. So, uh, I, I'm really sorry about the interruption, and uh, I'm back now. Um. I was going to talk about, I was on the thing of twin horror movies, so I've got a few examples here, and I don't know if you guys have seen all these, but these are movies that kind of came out around the same time or have similar plots. The first one on their list is Red Eye, and uh, it was overshadowed by Flight Plan. I saw Red Eye. I never saw Flight Plan. Flight Plan. Uh, So Flight Plan was uh, uh, was, um, released like right after Red Eye, and it pretty much uh, Mm. took the wind out of its sails. Another one is The Others and Sixth Sense. Those oh, kind of the same time? Two, oh. They came out right around the same time, and uh, it said okay. that The Others was overshadowed by The Sixth Sense, which is funny because The Sixth Sense was good, and we all know that I love M. Night Shyamalan, but I mean The Others to me is just a far fucking superior movie if we're comparing the two. Mm-hmm. Nicole Kidman? That yes. One? That movie yeah, is I've phenomenal. That, that is one of my favorite fucking especially uh, supernatural or paranormal movies of all time. I fucking love the others. Um, it's great. a good bit of gothic horror. <laughs> yeah. So this this next one here, I actually do associate these two together the same way that you guys were just talking about Prestige and um, Illusionist is ha- House on Haunted Hill and The Haunting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they did so, come out very close to one another. Right I saw in, both uh, of them in theaters. With extremely yeah. similar names. Yeah, yeah, and they and they're and they're Confusing similar a little bit. Yeah, they're yeah. similar movies as well. Um, a similar feel too. Um, for me, that's why I associate them together. They were both put out in 1999, and they say that the haunting actually overshadowed House on Haunted Hill. Hmm. Um, I I would agree with that. I think I actually did like the haunting a little bit better myself. So, um, End of Days and Stigmata is the next one. Yep. So what's the nigga? I remember Stigmata. They days. said that Stigmata um, overshadowed End of Days. End of Days with Schwarzenegger, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah that uh, was that was pretty yeah. cool too to see him I've, in that that role. It was. And I like. I may not have seen that one. Uh, let's see, End of Days, both, which ironically enough, oh, so they both featured Gabriel Byrne in lead roles. I know him. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, um, he's, he was he's in. He was in Company time. of Wolves. He was in Company yep, of Wolves. Yep, 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 absolutely. Yep. Um, I don't really know the connection of this one, but another one that got on the list here is Amityville Horror and The Shining. Shining came out before Amityville Horror, and I guess everybody was just so into that that uh, the Amityville Horror didn't really matter as much. I don't really think those are twin. twin yeah, I, I would probably. 
Uh, this one definitely uh, is. Oh, sorry. No, uh, the next What's one is definitely a uh, twin movie, which is The Cave and the Descent. Oh, yeah. So The Descent uh, knocked The Cave it right out. It's good. And, uh, yeah, I don't think I've better. seen The Cave. The Cave isn't great, but they're like similar movies. They're both like spelunking fucking monster shit. Oh, The Descent is fantastic. Oh, The yeah, Descent is great. Good. The Descent 2, not as much, but. Um, you know what, Jake? Along with this, uh, when we were doing cannibal movies, I noticed that there was a shitload that were like in the 1975 to 1980 range. There might have been 20 cannibal movies that were made during that time. Oh, yeah. So, movies definitely have trends, I think, yeah. for sure. I mean, uh, I, th I feel like I see it all the time. It's like uh, the paranormal movies, for example, Insidious, Sinister, and fucking The Conjuring were all like boom, boom, mm -hmm. boom, 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 boom a few years ago, back to back to back. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I, I definitely kind of see those trends for sure. Um, they said The Howling and American Werewolf in London. Mm -hmm. uh, um, American, American Werewolf Were in London is better in my opinion, but I do like The Howling as well, just not as much. I think American Werewolf in London is far superior in my What opinion. about a Mexican Werewolf in Texas? What? <laughs> you just made that up. No, it's, it's actually a movie. It's a real movie? Cabra. It is <laughs> definitely a joke movie. Oh. Uh, half the characters are like the, the Chupacabra, the Chubbacocker, the, and they can't say it properly. It's <laughs> The Chubby Cocker. Are these yep. Americans that can't say it correctly? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Americans are fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking stupid American. Um, the fourth kind in paranormal activity is the next one on the list. Uh, Leviathan in the Abyss is after that. Oh, Ooh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, that's solid. That's and one. they said the Abyss was the winner. Older sci -fi. Oh, for sure. Yeah. The Abyss, yeah, no, the Abyss the is fantastic. Oh, shit, Jen, here you go. Number 10, Near Dark, was overshadowed by the Lost Boys. Duh, I just said oh. it. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> What about the oh. Lost Boys in that other movie? They're dark. That's it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I hear an um, echo. <laughs> so there was uh, Dreamscape. I've never heard of it, but that was overshadowed by it. A Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Nightmare on Elm Street is actually better than Dreamscape. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, we have the, si <laughs> but, the silence over... Wait, what? You're saying it's better than Nightmare on Elm Street? Was no, 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 no. I said Nine Run Elm Street was better than oh, Dreamscape. Okay. okay. But right. Dreamscape has a few moments, but man, those special effects are not great. Not great. <laughs> yeah. So the next one is uh, Quiet Place Overshadowed the Silence. What about Bird Box? Bird Box? Bird Box was kind of like the quiet. Yeah. Bird Box. But that was, was well after. Was another, yeah. That was, was another well one of those. Well I, mean, I feel like it was. Like I feel like about years. five movies. I feel like about five movies came out around the same time where people had to shut the fuck up. And I think that's a <laughs> I think that's a good thing for most people to take from those movies is that sometimes the majority of people need to shut the fuck up. Hey y'all, sometimes <laughs> just shut the fuck up. Yeah, just shut the fuck up. Wait, what is that song? That was uh, back in the just shut the fuck shut up. The fuck shut up. the fuck up. <laughs> now you're thinking of jump the fuck up. By oh, yeah, Soulfly, so I'm thinking to shut about, the fuck up. I what think about it was Limp Biscuit. That's it Limp Biscuit, up. isn't it? Yeah. Shut the fuck you up. Shut the know. fuck up. Shut. shut the fuck up. Shut it up. Come shut on, up. Jake. Come shut on. It. I know you know who this band is. Um, I don't know, Steve. We, we, talk, we talked about it one day. <laughs> we talked about this one day. Oh, shit. We talk about a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to just say it? Just say it. Mindless self indulgence. Oh, oh shit. Shut, it shut me up. up. That's yeah, shut, shut me up. up. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Shut <laughs> me up and fuck me later. Is that what it's? Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Fuck me later. <laughs> yeah, mindless oh. self indulgence is the shit. I'm um, sorry. It, oh, yeah, you're right. I totally get it now. I, I was having a brain fart there. Mindless self indulgence <laughs> is awesome. Um, next on the list is Peeping Tom was overshadowed by the psycho. I know that movie. But the psycho I... overshadowed it. Oh well, okay. Let me talk real. <laughs> let me talk for a little bit. <laughs> okay, you talk. Um, no, Psycho is amazing. I'm not gonna dispute Psycho that. Psycho is like one of the best I'm movies not, of all time. Not gonna dispute this. Okay. Um, it is amazing, man. The shots are awesome. Um, but I feel like not a lot of people have seen Peeping Tom, and I've seen Peeping Tom, and it. Although there is that horrible dance scene. 
Okay, skip through the dance scene because that shit's trash. Um, it's very 60s. I think it's 60s. Um, dance scene. It's just terrible. Just skip it and go on to the rest of the movie because it definitely does have merit. It's pretty cool and the way he kills the people are pretty cool. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it, but... He calls yeah. it a cult classic, so... Mm -hmm. I like Peeping Tom. The next one on the list is something that I'm sure we all um, have feelings about, or at least I do, is uh, Gremlins overshadowed Ghoulies. Well, I love Gremlins. Gremlins. Gremlins had a bigger budget, I think, than Ghoulies did. I did like, I like, I like Ghoulies too, though. I mean, honestly, I do yeah. like them both, but Gremlins I is. Do, I like Ghoulies. Yeah. But do you remember, Gremlins... you, you said um, Six Sense. You remember Stir of Echoes? Yeah. Oh, sure, Becky. Yes. Oh, Evan. The Baconator. <laughs> yeah. I've got that on my list too, Steve. I swear to God, you were like reading my fucking notes from your house or something tonight. <laughs> like, I, I swear. I re you peek re over on this other. Um, yeah. uh, deranged. So screen real quick. A Texas Chainsaw, which Texas Chainsaw overshadows everything except for the Leprechaun, in my opinion. I know I've got really fucking weird. Those are the two best franchises of horror movies: is Texas Chainsaw and Leprechaun. And the Third, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Leprechaun was like the greatest <laughs> thing ever. Yeah. Did I say remember this? How, remember how I talked about nostalgia factor earlier? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yep. I don't know. It's a thing. It's okay. Either I way. do it too. I do it too, Jake. I'm not judging you. Did I ever mention to you guys, I know I talked to Rob about this before, but they actually considered making, and I think I did talk about this before, but they considered making a Leprechaun versus Candyman movie. I wish it what happened. Hell? I but wish it happened. Um, that Candyman would, Candy would slit him from gullet to whatever the fuck. But what? Tony, Todd, what? Tony Todd did not want to disgrace his character, so he was the one that said no. Yeah. And I love and Tony that's, Todd. That's, the, that's the reason we ended up with uh, Freddy versus Jason. Yeah, Freddy vs. Jason, because it was around the same time period, they wanted to do a Candyman Leprechaun, and that would have been fucking amazing. To me, I would have, mm -hmm. that'd probably be in my all-time top fucking ten. But yeah. <laughs> would have been Diamonds. I would have loved it. Oh, if only. Cal the Immortal What was Mons. that show? What was that show back in the day? Um, Celebrity Deathmatch. Do you remember that? Uh -huh. <laughs> MTV, <laughs> baby. Yeah. yeah. I can see oh, that. Oh, my God. I love that. I can see that happening in Celebrity Deathmatch, like that mashup there. So <laughs> very, I'm going to send this to all of you guys, and you may not like it, and I don't care because I'm sending it anyways. Okay. There's a band called Three Stroke Baron, or Four Stroke Baron. <laughs> uh, it's a three-piece. And they have a lot of videos that are claymation, and they are friggin' awesome. And there is one that reminds me of the Celebrity Deathmatch stuff because yeah. there are, like, clay people fighting bears. I'm going to send it to you. It's free, And the song is friggin' awesome, too. <laughs> um, um, I'm going to uh, say that I probably am going to like it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, they're friggin' cool. What about um, Seven and Copycat? Oh, okay. Copy, yeah. Copycat with Sigourney Weaver? Is that Copycat? Sigourney I Weaver? I don't think she was in it. Copycat. Let's see. I will say yeah. right off the bat. Uh, Harry Connick Jr. was in it, but. Um, yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Random factoid. Not the worst person ever. Now I've got to look this up to you. Yeah, no, I don't remember her what, in it. Whoever gets, I only watched whoever it, gets it first. Yeah, it was Harry Connick Jr. So, and he played, a, a, he did a really good job with that role in the same way that I thought. Um, Who's I looked the, up uh, copycat guitars and I see Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> oh, well, maybe you're right. I don't know. Uh, Harry, Connick Jr., Harry Connick Jr. is also in it. Uh, yes. But Sigourney Weaver is also in it. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, I wasn't sure if that's uh, what you that's were That's the one. About. Okay. Either that or there was some other copycat of a copycat. <laughs> um, I mean, I will say who's copycat, copycat of a copycat. Copycat, copycat. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I can't. Dwight Yoakam. Yeah, when he was in... Um, what the fuck? Panic room. That's so weird. Oh, panic room. Steve, oh, man, I don't know what is going on tonight. I literally was <laughs> just about to say that Dwight Yoakam, in my opinion, is like one of my favorite like actors that appears here and there. Like, right. I really like Dwight Yoakam in a movie. That is so. What the fuck is going? I swear to God, you're reading my fucking mind tonight, man. <laughs> weird. Like my oh. thoughts are in your 
swarming mm-hmm. around. I'm in your brain gaining your knowledge. One of us, one of us. Anyway, <laughs> Rob, so the last one on this list I wanted to put out there for you, Kaltiki the Immortal Monster was overshadowed by the blob. What the fuck is a Kaltiki? Kaltiki never the- heard it. Never uh, heard of it. I, I have a movie I have to watch no. now. It's uh never heard of it. I like the blob. It's one of those torches you put out back. The eighties blob. I think there's not many yes. people. It's an Italian it's production, so but it was definitely blobs. uh overshadowed. Not, not the original. The but the eighties. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> that's that. And that was something that I wanted to discuss because it yeah, went right with uh Steve's thing, the twin horrors. So um Seven is definitely the better movie over Copycat and Dwight Yoakum's awesome. And the blob is definitely better. Full circuit. Full circuit. Guys, full circuit. So anyway, I'm not really sure here. We're at an hour, and this is part two in one night. Um, If we wanted to wrap it up, I mean, I've got stuff here for days, so. Yeah, me too. We've kind of had a a bonkers (laughs) night with, uh, I don't know, just technical difficulties and other issues. Us. Well, yeah, we I don't know for an hour and 45 minutes easy. I yeah. mean, uh, if you guys want to shoot for it, uh, we could try a part three or just make a really fucking long one or something. I had a, I had a really fun thing here, um, and I know Jen's got stuff, and I want to give her some some space and time in, in we here. We can always do it in the next one. I'm, no. I'm easy. I'm in. I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> cool and easy. Um. <laughs> the way i like them wrong word choice so i i uh yeah the the, i got a segment that's going to take a while so i'm not really going to get into it but i was on ebay um and i'll just give you a really quick summary and then i'm going to get into this next time it's a lot of fun but i was on ebay and they actually sell like haunted items on there and i found it absolutely Mm -hmm. fucking hilarious and i uh did you buy a uh, monkey's paw (laughs) <laughs> I didn't. I copy and pasted some of the stuff because I just thought it was like really fun, and I thought it'd make like really fun conversation. Um, yeah. So uh, that's something I'm going to get into. I guess maybe maybe we'll go ahead and continue this one this one on for uh, next Thursday and and cover some of these topics that it's we a didn't good get place to start. Um, I, I'm looking forward to talking about it because, I mean, fucking haunted items on eBay. I mean, how does that sound bad to anybody? That's that's great. <laughs> right, that's gold right there. Sounds like a waste of money. Yeah, but, but it's so fun. I'm curious. I am curious. And I'm definitely going to feel that curiosity. <laughs> Would you do buy a pocket watch from Chernobyl or something? I didn't buy anything, but I wanted to talk about what people are trying to sell more than anything. Like, it's great. And the descriptions, I can't wait to share the descriptions with you of some of these items. It's just, I came across it and it was pure fucking gold. So, um, Jen, was there anything that you had that was, uh, you know, kind of somewhat quick that you want? I, I feel like I didn't quick. give you enough time tonight. Oh, no, I'm cool. You sure? Um, Not easy, you're cool. Yeah, I'm okay. cool. Okay. Cool. Um, no, I was just going to talk about some of the movies that I've watched lately. Um, like The Passenger, really good. You should watch it. Um, we can go into it in the next episode, but I watched The Passenger, I watched Late Night with the Devil, and I watched a movie called, yeah, Uh, I watched a movie called, yeah, I should. Um, (laughs) I also watched a movie called Men. (laughs) Ooh, I did you you finish it? I did, I finished it, yeah. Okay. Uh, it, it, another it's, another one of my friends so started boring. watching it on Facebook. We'll, we'll save so it, boring. but yes. Yeah. Uh, I definitely I, I, want to talk about Late Night with the Devil because it's so big, but I haven't mm-hmm. had a chance to sit down and watch it yet. So I want okay. to see that one uh, before oh. we talk about that because I want to. Yeah. I probably want to add something in there. Uh, I feel like I need to watch it again because I've I just watched it the one time and I think the hype was more. I was more hyped about it than what it gave back mm-hmm. in return. But maybe yeah. there's more there that I, I don't know. I mean, it was an enjoyable movie. It was good, but I, yeah. I don't think it hit the mark. Oh, well, I, I kind of agree with you. I mean, I, I like it, but I feel like I, I wanted more. But we can talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see it. Yeah. I mean, it ended We're, like yeah. this. I haven't seen it yet either. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Let's go ahead and do like the silence and fucking uh, bird box and just shut the fuck up. 
<laughs> did they have to shut up in Bird Box? No, they just couldn't see. They couldn't Bird Box see. was different. Yeah. But okay. it was, but it was the same the kind same of like trope. concept with the, yeah, with the senses, like one sense being cut off or whatever. So be like a quiet place and shut the fuck up. <laughs> that's, what, that's where I wanted to go with that. Um, all right. So do you guys uh, have any um, recommendations? I feel like they're just um, some. Watch the passenger. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> I'll I'll jump in. Uh, I was gonna recommend, I think Sunshine, but I think I've already recommended that. So because we mentioned the descent, I'm gonna recommend As Above, So Below. Oh yeah, I like that too. I like that movie. So I'm gonna go ahead uh, and say that I'm gonna go ahead and say I didn't care much for that movie, but well, I just want to make sure that people don't know. I want to make sure that people that feel like I did know that I didn't recommend it. This is Rob's recommendation. This is this okay. is one of those movies Rob, where they got the Rob camera Walker running around with them. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right, well, it? since I said Chernobyl, uh, let's go with Chernobyl Diaries, which caught a lot of flack that back was, in the I day. I thought that was pretty good. That one wasn't it bad. was good, but there was a lot of people that were pissed off that they made almost a mockery of what happened um, in that people turned into like these type of zombies as opposed yeah. to, you know, they, they kind of desensitized mm. the the circumstances around that area, although it's been so long, I mean, what's the statute of limitation on, you know, poking fun at a at a disaster too, like that? Too but, soon. Oh. Too soon. I called it the Fukushima yeah. uh, Diaries. Uh, same yeah. thing would have been, yeah. I don't know. But I like that movie. I thought it was pretty good. I mean, we're not desensitized enough at this point where we can just, I mean, fucking aliens exist. And nobody gave a shit anyway. <laughs> The fuck ever. We are the aliens. We might be. That'd be a fucking twist. <laughs> and the it? monsters. Yeah, we're we're definitely the monsters. Well, that was what Cannibal Holocaust was all about, is who is the real mm-hmm. monster. Dun, dun, Humans. Dun. <laughs> Jen, you got a recommendation? Yeah, I already did it. Sure I good. said the passenger. 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 Fuck. I I don't know. <laughs> we'll where talk I'm. about that next episode, maybe. So I've got I've I've got a recommendation which is a little weird tonight because my recommendation is actually I haven't finished this movie yet. But so like when I get Never home <laughs> when I work when I work a night shift and I get home, I stay up for a little while, have a snack or whatever, and I watch twenty minutes, thirty minutes of a movie. Um and I've been watching Baghead. And I don't know if you guys oh, have yeah. seen that yet. I've or heard not. of it. I've not seen it. I've scrolled I've past it a hundred times and I've yeah. like wanted to stop and watch it and mm-hmm. I ended up watching um the last days on Mars instead last night, but um, how's the be- how's the start of it? I mean, honestly, I'm like two thirds the way through, and I think it's a really interesting movie. Like, I'm digging it, and I mean, I I won't necessarily say, hey, you got to watch this because I don't know how it ends yet, and maybe the ending is just complete shit. But at this point in time, I would say it's definitely got my attention. I'm definitely going to finish it probably tonight, even, and uh, I've really enjoyed it so far. It's kind of an original idea also it's uh it's it's not um it has nothing to do with talk to me but it reminds me of talk to me and the fact that it's like i really didn't know what to expect and i was very surprised at the fact that it was like an original idea mm-hmm. also on that same token when you're talking about movies that are enjoyable to watch with people i will never forget watching talk to me with rob <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, talk to me was a good movie but i mean still the uh it was just really fun. The commentary we were throwing yeah. out was on was point. Great. So I was um, wondering which one of you guys were sucking the other person's toes. Oh God! Definitely Rob. <laughs> I, 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 we I, called that. Yeah, I, I called that that whole scene. I would. What, what are you, I was right there with you calling the scene. <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about. Uh, <laughs> yeah, amongst amongst other things, I think we called a lot of the funny shit. They, uh, you, you def. I think I called the feet more than you, and I think you definitely were the only one that called the zombie kangaroo. The ghost kangaroo. <laughs> ghost kangaroo. I didn't see, the ghost, didn't see the ghost kangaroo. There needs to be a movie about a ghost kangaroo. I'm sure, there will be. There it is. I'm sure, there will be, and you should fucking sue them for rights because you know I don't think it's been done yet. But then again, we're not in Australia, and they're fucking weird down there. So they probably have fifteen movies about ghost kangaroos in Australia. I mean, who the fuck knows? They might. Yeah. New Zealand has a movie. If they can, about, if they uh, can make Slother House, they can make. Uh, I've a seen kangaroo. that, and I do not recommend that movie. 
Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I watched that and I was like, okay, this is a bad, bad movie. This is not a bad, good movie. I guess it was a little bit better because I did watch it with a friend, but and we made fun of it. Well, but for man, my second man, that was recommendation of the night, people should watch Black Sheep. It's a New I Zealand like movie. movie and I not like the movie. David Spade movie. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> zombie Sheep, okay? It's Zombie Sheep. Not not David Spade, not a uh, other dude. Chris, Chris Farley. Farley. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Black Sheep. Fuck Chris Farley. Yeah. yeah. I really liked him when I was younger. I actually like, mm-hmm. was really upset when he died. I, I like mm-hmm. took a day off of school, which I was really wanted any excuse to take a day off of school, but I took a day off of school and he died because I was upset. And I watched my yeah, uh, a... Jerry Springer Northern Exposure duo. Mm-hmm. That was, he was, he was, he was, uh, no pun intended, but he was big time back then. He was great. Oh, yeah. Tommy uh, Boy. Tommy Boy. Uh, I, I saw that movie so many times, probably a hundred times. Yeah, he was so good. I always, I actually Beverly always. Hills Ninja. Oh, Hills yeah. Ninja. That one. The great white ninja. I always found David Spade to be slightly annoying, but I mean, I it's still like part, part of the dynamic. Yeah, it, it right. worked in the dynamic for sure. I mean, <laughs> they definitely were like a really good uh, pair. So David pair. Spade and Father of the Year is is pretty good. If you guys yeah, haven't seen Father of the Year, that's a must there. see. I mean, I don't think I've seen if that. Y'all are- Oh. Talking about David Spade, we got to talk about Joe Dirt, the yes, best movie I have of all that. time. Is yes. yeah, they, I think he did outdid himself in Father of the Year. Really? I'll give you one, and I know we got to go, but I'll give you two seconds of, of one scene. This guy is the epitome of trailer trash, um, to where he, he's got out, <laughs> indoor outdoor furniture in his trailer, um, <laughs> as kind of like his, his uh, kitchen table and everything. His neighbor has a pickup truck, an old lady, and he he lined the back of it with a tarp and filled it with water. So it's his little pool. <laughs> and he had um, he turned it into a jacuzzi with a uh, little like egg beaters that he plugged in. Um, but anyway, she she takes off, gets in her truck and takes off and he's in the back of it, buck ass naked. And there's a kid jogging in the trailer park and she slams the brake. And David Spade just he slams into the back of the truck and then the tailgate comes down and he goes ass <laughs> over backwards naked in, in the uh, road. It's hilarious, man. I mean, it's it's dumb. There's a lot of stupid shit, but there's there's some good stuff in that movie. I feel like a lot of people have done that. I, th- I feel like I've seen a lot of rednecks that turn the back of their trucks into pools and shit these days. Well, art imitates life. So, yeah, <laughs> and life, you know, and vice versa sometimes. Yeah. And with that note, I guess I'll go with a quote. And that note, you guys didn't do any of the fucking shit we promised everybody, by the way. I'm really disappointed in you. Beginning of the show, I mean, I didn't see any balloon animals, no fucking koi fish. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to make promises anymore that you guys can't keep. Uh, I'm done with that. <laughs> so to end this all, I'm going to go with this. Um, I'm just curious if you guys even know this one. For once, I'm going to ask you guys. Do you... So this is... Uh, Oh, wow. Your tits are stupendous. Your tits are fucking just so juicy, dude. You got perfect nipple placement, baby. Those would win in a fucking titty contest. I can only assume he's talking about a dude. No, he's not. No, I have no no idea. Yeah, no, that was uh, there was a sex scene in the remake of Friday the 13th where uh, they're having sex and it was like the uh, surfer boy fucking rich kid fucking the girl and he he was just like oh wow your your tits are stupendous your tits are fucking just so juicy dude you got perfect nipple placement baby these would win in a fucking titty contest but can you put a lipstick tube inside of them i don't know about that um you probably could after fucking jason was done with her um i put a lot of stuff inside of her after he was done with her um that feels like a jason quote I feel like there should be more titty contests is what I got from that. But oh, don't shake your head at me, Jen. Fucking judgy, <laughs> ju- judgmental over there. Um. Judge anyway, Jen. hmm. Judge Jen. Judge Jen. Yeah. yeah. Judge Jenny Green Teeth over there. Fucking oh, shake man. your head at me. No. Yeah, like no. you wouldn't enjoy a good titty contest. Like I didn't say you had to be in it. <laughs> I mean, fuck. Anyway, um. 
you guys got anything else? If not, I'm going to tell all these uh, people, all however many of them there are after an hour and 24 minutes of listening to us to go ahead. If you made it an hour and 24 minutes through this shit, just <laughs> how could you not like, like fucking follow whatever? I mean, if you're listening to this, you definitely committed already. I mean, you know, anyway, uh, if you didn't watch part one, watch part one, because this thing's actually two hours. Love y'all. Good night.